Early 20th century, the golden age of the second industrial revolution. The world experienced an immeasurable amount of new innovations and the improvements in the existing technologies blooming across the continents. Notably, the widespread use of oil and other fossil fuel engines has a crucial role in leading the old world towards the present at a much faster pace than before. Yet, this period was also the beginning of the conflicts between the world superpowers and came to see the decline of many European empires that had lasted for hundreds of years. The conflict isn't a war between two nations and their colonies, but it is a great war between alliances at a global scale. This is the Great World War and the First World War in the modern day. The causes that led to World War I are varied, but the most well known is the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife which was carried out by Serbian nationalists while the Archduke visited Serbia in 1914. The outcome of Archduke Ferdinand's death was a minuscule event, but it sparked the wariness of other European empires about being involved in the war, which forced him to form alliances in an attempt to avoid war. Britain, France, and Russia established the alliance force, while Germany, Italy, and Austria-Hungary formed the central powers. Nevertheless, the relationships between the Germans, British, and French were already tense, as they are rivals in trading and colonizing. Initially, these alliances were meant to keep every empire in check, thus preventing an outbreak of the war. However, it turned out to have an opposite effect. Since Germany advised Austria-Hungary to be firm with Serbia, the empire felt obligated to join the conflict and promptly wage war with Russia. Because Britain and France had already established an alliance with Russia, they had no choice but to declare war with Germany. Just like falling dominoes, Every European power eventually got wrapped into the vortex of the conflict in 1914. Although wars broke out across Europe and their colonies, the American continent stayed unharmed as they felt no obligation to be involved. Therefore, the United States decided to stay neutral, but the policy did not last long. As the world economy became globalized, U.S. and the other world powers have to rely on each other either on raw materials or goods. Therefore, despite of declaring neutrality, Americans still wanted to continue trading with other European nations and the rest of the world. However, Americans' goods and ships were constantly damaged by the Germans' boats. Americans already had a negative opinion on Germany. Followed by another infamous news, the Zimmermann telegram, which few months after announcement of unrestricted submarines from Germans, Americans became outraged with the Central Powers and declared to intervene on the war on April 16, 1917. Within the first six months, thousands of American men bid their families farewell to join the war in Europe. Most of the soldiers would gather at the eastern coast and set sail on warships that harbored there. The soldiers arrived at Pier No. 54 in New York City. There was a man named Harold Vassar, an American cadet officer and the owner of the Vassar's Journal, preparing himself to join the battlefield in France. Harold Vassar was drafted to the U.S. military during the First World War. He started writing his diary in August 1917. On the first page of the journal, Harold Vassar boarded on the RMS Arania. RMS Arania was an ocean liner owned by the Cunard Line and was planned to serve between Canada and Europe. Vassar mentioned that due to the circumstance of the Great War, the ship had been redesigned to fit the military use. But since it was once a great passenger cruiser, Vassar and the other cadets had their own private space during the course of France. In his journal, Vassar once mentioned the ship never keeping in a straight course for more than three minutes at a time but continuously zigzagging in order to avoid the possibility of a submarine attacking. Since the Germans hoped through practicing the unrestricted submarine, they would be able to deprive Great Britain of food and war materials, as these resources are crucial in Great Britain's war efforts. With German submarine blockades around the Europe sea waters, in order to stop American troops from advancing into the land of Europe, the RMS Arania sailed to Canada, and from there she headed to Britain in a zigzag manner.
Just like any other war, the First World War is no exception in having a large casualty. With a large number of deaths in Europe every day during this period, the need of medical is more important than ever. Vassar described most of the officers in his ship were medical men, while the other men are mostly from the 7th Artillery. There is also an ambulance and medical unit from Syracuse. The wounded of World War I is not only benefited by the advances in medical field, but also quickly established and well prepared by the Army Medical Department. From a base of 833 medical officers on active duty and 1,267 in the National Guard, the Medical Corps grew to 30,591 in service at the time of the armistice. Vassar initially wrote his diary to keep track of his day as he found nothing to do on the ship on the way to France, but he then shifted the purpose of the journal by the time he and the other men reached Europe. When Vassar settled at Britain, he felt there was a very slight chance for him to come back to his homeland alive, and so were the others. Therefore, he himself decided to record names and info of his comrades instead. And as far as his diary goes, Vassar and the other cadets on the RMS arrived to Liverpool, Britain, and had a military exercise with the Allied force in Britain before marching to France. Amalgamation as a general concept of placing American soldiers into British or French units had the advantage in training inexperienced soldiers, which mainly consist of American men, how to survive in the trench warfare. It was obvious that the Americans were not yet ready to fight on their own. With new advanced military weapons were introduced for the first time on the battlefield, the Western Front became a no man's land where hundreds died for each yard gained from the trench warfare. Since Americans have held to a strict declaration of neutrality, General Tom Bridges, a distinguished divisional commander of the Britain Army, believed the Americans would have no opportunity to survive in this modern war. He suggested the U.S. military to cooperate in Almagation, which would allow the new soldiers to adopt the trench tactic before moving to the Western Front. Not only the training would provide a helpful knowledge and survival to the American soldiers, the Almagation would also tighten the relationship between the U.S. and the Allied forces. After four years, the Great War eventually ended with Central Powers' defeat, with a large loss from both sides. The First World War was the first major war between the world superpowers around the globe. This is the first time advanced weapons were introduced on the battlefield, and unlike any other war before, both the Allied and Central Powers not only driven by greed, but also by the sense of nationalism. Not only the war started with assassination pulled by the Serbian nationalists, Men across Europe and Europe's colonies took the ideal of patriotism to an extreme and ready response to the call of their motherland to join the meaningless war. At the end, what the First World War brought to the modern world are a loss for the beloved ones, loss of the comrades, and hatred to the defeat sides, and soon sparked another great, more devastating conflict.